you know, it's so clear when we look back through the, you know, at the uh, stepping stones of life, you know, the, the, the journey that has taken us that, you know, if that hadn't happened with my mom, I wouldn't be where I am now and I wouldn't, and I don't choose to be anywhere else apart from now, with, um, you know, in service of, of, the, of the great awakening of what's happening on this incredible, beautiful planet where we live, you know. Uh, it's like everything was equipping me to do the work that I am now really stepping up and st stepping into around this union of the divine, masculine and feminine. And I couldn't have done that if my mum hadn't left. It's Hello and welcome into another edition of Chi Time, your conscious living show with me, Clara Apollo. And on this episode, I have for you a dear friend, Miguel Dean, who has been in the arena of developing sort of the masculine sensitivity so that getting the men up to speed with what the women are doing. I shouldn't really say it like this because we're all in it together and it kind of feels like... Um, we're all kind of wanting the same thing, but because we have different genders ass um, assigned to us at birth, we have that that we're playing out in the world. And I, and I cannot wait to speak with him about this and some other aspects of divine masculine, divine feminine discussion, because he's just bought a new book out called Bring Him Home. And I've read the first two chapters. I so want to read the rest of it. But anyway, let's bring Miguel on now. Welcome back to Chi Time. Hello, Clara. Hello. Thank you very much for inviting me back. It's always good to, uh, yeah, the old friends and, you know, just come back and have a good old natter. That's it, isn't it? A bit of a chee chat. But, yeah. you know, well done for bringing out your, your second book. I mean, your first one, which is this one, The Stepping Stones in the Mist, has done very, very well for so many people to have sort of, it's read your, your story is such a medicine. For, for people and, and that's really where you were coming from particularly with this one and I know with the one that you've got coming up yeah how how how's this been going just briefly about Step, Stepping Stones before we launch into Bring Him Home. Yeah Stepping Stones has been uh, ticking along yeah it, it ticks along and you know um, the, the, you know, I get the book requests here and there but it, it's funny Stepping Stones in the Mist was it's so sort of indicative of where I was at the time because it was seven or eight years ago that I wrote it and there was an element, much more of an element of kind of low self-worth and playing small in that, you know, it was self-published and, and, and I really struggled to sort of promote it because it, it, you know, it felt like, who would you think you are, Miguel? And who are you to, you know, to be prom promoting your story? You know, it's no big deal. Nobody wants to know. And all those kind of voices were quite loud then, you know, whereas I've reframed it in the seven, eight years since you know there's been a lots of growth uh, lots of interesting stuff going on and so with the new book it feels a lot more well well who am i not to and if i don't promote it and if i don't you know uh, talk about it then how is it going to fulfill its um you know purpose of touching and healing many hearts so it's like miguel just you know just just get it together and you know stop being ridiculous and talk about your book if you want it to help and you want it to reach people then you know then, then, then book, yeah. absolutely and this is part of how your story is medicine because other people hearing that that might think who are going to be interested in my story i mean is that my mm. ego talking here actually our egos can keep us very small when our message is on point and we can hear the calling it's like mm. you know who am i to do it that's actually part of your ego stopping you from from sharing your truth with others that it, it could ignite their truth in. So brilliant for uh, reframing that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So on to the bring him home book. Oh God. Give us a flash of that. Okay. Here's bring it, here, here it is. Wow. A twin yeah. flame love story. Uh huh. It is indeed. Um, so yeah, you want to know a little bit about it? Oh yes. Uh, okay, so in essence, it it tells the uh, my own true story of the power of conscious relationship, the power of reverence of the divine feminine to bring us home, as in you know, bring us back to the heart to heal old wounds to awaken us to the true nature of, of, of who we really are, you know, beyond 
the conditioning, the programming, which, you know, for me is, yeah, I, I guess the short answer, is, you know, it's, it's about my, uh, a really significant chunk of my road to sacred masculinity. Yeah, that's what yeah, it's about. And that's interesting. So rather, these words sort of describing divine feminine, divine masculine, sacred feminine, I think this, the sacredness, mm. that tends to me, feels more encompassing that there's a mm. sacredness of all life and that mm. our divinity is part of that, but so is our physicality. Yes, yeah, and, absolutely. And being here. And so when we look at divine masculine feminine, we're looking at there's a separateness there, but actually there's not. It's this, the weave within us. And that's something that I know is within your book a little bit further on. Not, not that I've read it further than the two chapters, but from what you've talked to me about and the blogs that you've written and your other writings, you mm -hmm. speak about this within oneself, you know, finding that harmony and balance of the opposites or the polarities within oneself. And is this the journey that you've been on with this book? Yeah, 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 very much so. It's, yeah, it all sort of bubbled up in, into sort of focus, into clarity. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, you know, you'll totally get this because it, it's all about the yin yang, you know, the, the interconnectedness and that both are present within, within each other and the, the, the divine union of the masculine and feminine within ourselves. Um, what, you know, what became really clear for me was you know, we spend so much of our lives, and, and, and this is totally what I did, looking outside of me for um, woman to complete me, you know, for a relationship to complete me when, you know, real change is always an inside job. And so, you know, the, 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 the key focus really is to find that union within ourselves of the yin yang of the masculine, feminine energies, qualities, principles within ourselves. And then, you know, everything externally is a reflection of the internal. So as we heal those wounds, those mother, father wounds, which are often the, you know, the, the really key, that there are initial experiences of the masculine and the feminine, of male and female. So as we heal those wounds and we take care of our inner child, then they're just, the, 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 the divine union just begins to sort of like take shape more and, and, and connect and then that's reflected in our relationships that, that we have in the world. Mm. That's my experience. Absolutely. And you had a very um, a shocking beginning to your life and that you lost your mother. How old are you when, when she passed? Uh, about seven months. Yeah, yeah, seven months old. So yeah. you, you don't have any physical memory of, of her. But, you know, I was thinking about that's a really harsh, dare I say it, gift. <laughs> yeah, um, you, can say gift, you can say gift with me, Clara. Yeah, um, because there will be there will be some sort of soul um, contract with you mm -hmm. and her, and mm -hmm. that we often look at the things that have happened that are very difficult to deal with. Like, oh, I wish that hadn't happened, or I wish mm -hmm. it could have been different. But somewhere it was your karma to experience that, and how that has rounded you as an individual and got you to where you are today. Mm -hmm. Is that when yeah. did you? first realized it was actually a gift that she passed when you were so young? Um, I guess it's been the last decade that, you know, that that's been deepening within me. You know, I think probably about 10 years ago that it began, you know, to be on my radar as it were. But uh, I guess for a long time, it was more of a, you know, an intellectual concept, an idea, you know, that was kind of like, you know, just batting around a little bit and playing with, but it is, yeah, so over time it deepened, and and now I could, yeah, I could totally say that it's a yeah, it's a full truth, and I, you know, it's so clear when we look back through the, you know, at the uh, stepping stones of life, you know, the, the the journey that has taken us, that you know, if that hadn't happened with my mom, I wouldn't be where I am now, and I wouldn't, and I don't choose to be anywhere else apart from now, um, you know, in service of. Of the, of the great awakening of what's happening on this incredible beautiful planet where we live you know uh, it's like everything was equipping me to do the work that i am now really stepping up and st stepping into around this union of the divine masculine and feminine and i couldn't have done that if my mum hadn't left it set me in motion to go in search of the divine feminine so you know it's just 
just gratitude and awe really at the you know how amazing that all is isn't that incredible so for anyone listening we have miguel dean here with us talking about his new book and subsequent topics so that is bring him home and looking at challenges and difficulties and what we're facing what humanity is facing right now um mm. and the this pull either to fear or to love that seems to be running through everything um it really still comes back to the one as I'm thinking that I'm with that energy there. It's like, you can see the fear out there, but it's all out there. And the fear within us is just what's made up in our minds. Cause right here in this present moment, wherever you are, you're safe because you're on the planet. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, there's, there's so much around self talk, self care, self realization that comes through your work to ignite others and it's been an, ex an exploration of you on the page as you've written i can see it's your process which is what your book is also the, your new book is, is saying you're you're working it out as you're writing it yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean it, it seems uh, you know again that the outside is a reflection of the inside so that you know the, these two journeys of how we are in the world and how we you know the, the twin trail that goes inside and our own internal healing and so on so the, the more that we let go of fear in, in ourselves from our story from our you know from our wounds from our you know uh, conditioning external environment and so on the more we let go of that fear the less we see and the less we attract and resonate with fear that's happening externally so it's just this journey back to love, you know, which is the true essence of, of who we are. And that, you know, in bring, uh, bring Him Home, you know, I just, my lover, kind of like, it was a real catalyst and a, a powerful, deep purging of, you know, the residue of fear that needed to be, you know, that needed to be transformed, that needed to be released, that was still a kind of like a bit of protective, wall around my heart that was protected that was that was preventing me from living fully from the heart and being fully who i am because th there was still all that fear of running you know running around in the background and essentially because she kept leaving me she kept you know it was like a reconfiguration of, of my mother leaving as a child and so i so it just and because i put my sword in the ground and said I will be with this woman, this woman, I'm not, I'm not running from this fear anymore. I'm not going to get stoned like I used to. I'm not going to avoid it. I'm not going to numb. I will stand here until this work is done because I'm getting old and every relationship has been, you know, impacted by this old wound, this old program that, that I knew was still running. And it was like, no more, it, it, it ends here. And so, you know, life, God, goddess, whatever you, heard me and said all right okay let, 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 let you know let's let him have it then <laughs> bring it again. on yeah. yeah yeah i love that you put your sword in the ground and said i'm not running away from this challenge anymore mm -hmm. that's such courage and courage of course is the energy of the heart the cour yeah. courageous yeah. heart warrior mm -hmm. well it, you know such a beautiful woman it was like if this woman isn't worth doing this work for you know then then nothing is it, 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 it was really yeah i guess that 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 you know that was a big part of it you know life because you know we met in a very synchronous way you know we, we we'd met nine months earlier but it wasn't the right time we, it was like life just gave us this little glimpse this little connection a, a, a brief conversation at a, um, an event that i was speaking at and and then yeah and then nine months later when i'm single and i'm available and so on it was like it, you know she pops back up it's like okay right now now do now get on and do the work and it was like you know little did i know what the lure of that beauty and the divine feminine you know just lure you in and uh, seduce until i was uh, yeah you know open enough to uh, and loving enough and fallen in enough to um do what needed to be done yeah. yeah absolutely so that's another example of how what is meant for you will not pass you by mm -mm. 
no, no. no. Exactly. Everything happens for everything happens for our highest, uh, you know, for our highest good. And you know, I guess a lot of consciousness and awareness is just, you know, how quickly can you see that? As soon as something is happening that's a bit uncomfortable, instead of, oh, how do I avoid this and get rid of it or, or get it over and done with as quickly as possible? How can I step towards it? How can I step into it? And embrace it and go oh wow this is a challenge here this is uncomfortable this is difficult that means hey when i you know when i get to grips with this when i really sort of like you know surrender to this i'm going to be more of who i really am i'm going to be more at peace i'm going to be more in love i'm going to be more alive you know wow so stepping towards the things that challenge you mm. again brave brave courageous heart miguel Thank you so much for what you've shared so far. We'd really like to hear your first tune of choice, if we may. Um, okay, okay. So I, I remember that we, I, I don't know if there needs to be, a, does it need to be a special order of, of which track? Well, it's how you're feeling now. Which one of those yeah. two do you feel we would like to share right now? <sighs> I think it would, um, yeah. Is it, uh, I, I can't even, my mind is so fuzzy. Is it uh, Blessed Are We, the, 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 that the one? Yes. The, the, the payer one, it's such a sort of sacred tune. And um, you know, I walk on the earth, you know, almost daily. You know, I, I, it's occasionally there are days when I can't find time to do it, but I've got some beautiful sacred Malvern Hills where I live. And, and I, you know, it's, they're my healer, my lover, my workout, my meditation my everything and as much as i can and when the weather and i'm feeling brave enough again i'm, I'm i'll walk barefoot and yeah each prayer is a, each foot is a little prayer and a little kiss upon the earth and the, the, this song just seems to embody that so beautiful how sacred it all is really thank you let's hear from Paya and blessed we are wow that is such a special track thank you for choosing that miguel no it's uh yeah you know everything's for sharing it's no good having beautiful music and just enjoying it yourself if you find something beautiful you just want to share it don't you absolutely and one of the things that i know we share is this love of walking in nature and you briefly introduced us to this love of yours um before that that track and i wanted to pick up on it because it's also very linked to how we can balance ourselves and you know in this world of having a lot of things to do where best can we be if not in nature and is that why it calls you or is there more reasons yeah well th that's certainly that's certainly some of it yeah it's um it's an immersion for, for me in, in, in the divine feminine as well, you know, it's that when, when I began thinking, well, okay, so if I, if I can't find, if the answer to complete me and to, you know, to nourish and to connect with the divine feminine with, and heal the feminine within myself because of my mother wound and whatever, you know, isn't through externally through a woman in relationship, well, then how do I do that internally? And, you know, and it became very clear that yeah, nature is just, you know, it is creation. It is it, it, the same as woman constantly, you know, that gives birth. Nation, uh, nature is constantly giving birth. It is the embodiment of creation. It is the manifestation of creation and the divine feminine energy. So it just feels beautiful to be in nature, you know, to, you know, when you've got your bare feet on the floor, then you're absorbing the, the Schumann resonance, the, the vibration, the heartbeat of the earth. It brings us back into alignment. Uh, with that, with that which we've become in this fast-paced modern technological world, so disconnected from, really, you know, and it it helps just me just remember who I am, you know. It helps me remember. It's like a body memory of who I am. I am a a child of creation. I I am a you know a little bit spark of the divine. Um, so you know, I guess that's why. Yeah, you know, some of the reasons why nature is so important for me. And, and yeah, to, to stop and to be, just to be, you know. I, it, it, I, I was walking with a friend the other day and we, and we just paused in these woods and, and it just really becomes clear that, yeah, when you actually physically stop moving, it's what, you can be in nature and it's beautiful and healing, but when you physically stop and there is no movement, 
then something really profound just happens. You know, there, there is a, a deeper uh, sort of sinking into the to the present and into the senses and into the body and, and into everything. It just becomes delicious, really. You know, just such a simple act. And, and, and in that is where my creativity arises from. You know, I'm a writer, I'm a poet, I love creating, but I can't, I'm very aware that if I'm too busy, I don't feel. I'm, you know, I'm more from one thing to the next. And, and then if I don't feel, then the, the feeling has an awful lot to do with creativity, you know, and so no creativity arises. And sometimes I get a bit like, oh, you know, I'm, like, you know, I want to be putting out good quality content and stuff on social media and stuff but unless i have enough space and enough time in nature it, it doesn't arise you know it, it doesn't happen it, again we're back to the yin yang you know the, the 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 more masculine energy of doing and that doesn't mean man and male it's just that masculine or, or your yang i guess and the yin or more or more feminine energy they're not necessarily gender specific and i think there's confusion arises with that sometimes you know so so you're saying that it's only men that should be doing stuff and women are just sitting around it's like no no it's not it's not that at all but there has been a lack of honoring in our society of the feminine principle of stillness and being and receptivity and uh, you know i would say that's that's yeah that's what nature is all about for me really just that doing arising from being kind of thing you know I really am with you on that going for walks in nature and being still in nature as well walking and stillness I mean it's a qigong it's um, being in the moment and letting the moment expand because you're physically still mm -hmm. and as you said your senses just become more aware you become more present to all your, not just your physical five senses, but your inner sense of being and connection to the elements in nature. You know, that feels more like home. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't it really? That is home. That is home, you know, it is that yeah, home in the present moment, home in the heart, the heart feeling that, that you know, which all happens in the body and yeah, you know, too much time in the head and not enough time in the body. And you know, and, yeah, and look at the, you can see the result of that in the you know in the world. Absolutely, and space, this need for space. So and busyness. So I I have removed that word busy from my vocabulary. I will not use it anymore. Um, it doesn't mean that I'm not well occupied. <laughs> Only I find that probably pertains more to like a toilet, vacant or occupied. But anyway, <laughs> but that to look for space where I can so between tasks there's a space opportunity mm. within you know at the end of a sentence there's a space opportunity to to breathe and to be and to let that be the nourishment I mean this is an ongoing thing I don't get it right all the time at all it's like a challenge for me to kind of work with where is the space in my life where is the space in in the togetherness and i think that is a, a khalil gibram quote that i absolutely love about the pillars you know of the, the marriage of the divine masculine feminine the space in your togetherness and is that something that you found with um researching and writing bring him home the um the the i'm not quite sure what the, what the question is there Clara. If, Okay. Clarify that for me. Um, around space, it just went there. <laughs> it just went around, uh, you know, within um, looking at the different aspects of self, the duality or the ex external feminine or, or masculine. With, mm. Within that is a, is a spaciousness that you don't have to kind of cram each other. You find someone that you're in love with, twin flaming or soul mating with. Yes, yes. But there's the space there for you to be individuals or the space for the, the dance to occur rather than totally yeah totally okay yeah I, I, I totally get that yeah yes but because to begin with a lot of the time in my relationships there, there wasn't that space and the, the, the space I didn't want that space because I guess yeah I guess in that space there was pain that needed to be felt and that needed to be let you know set free so there was, you know, wanting to be constantly 
connected and a neediness and a codependency, you know, uh, elements of the relationship. Whereas now, um, yeah, you know, it's like we, we, we come together because we choose to come together, you know, because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of like the icing on the, on the cake. Life is beautiful with myself because the truth is we're never really alone, are we? We're always with ourselves. You know, or we're with nature, or we're in. You know, it's an, it's it's the egoic mind. It seems that creates the illusion of separateness. We're never really alone, but yeah, that that spaciousness is just yeah. You know, just take a big sigh into it because it, it it's just so liberating and it's so beautiful to be totally at peace with yourself and, and enjoy the spaciousness and enjoy the aloneness. And then, you know, when you come together, there is something richer and there is something beautiful. It, it's kind of like the sort of alchemy thing, isn't it? Of the, the, then the whole is more than the sum of the parts when you come together in that spaciousness. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But there we've also got um, an acknowledgement um, of letting go of fear because often coming into your own space and being quiet and still could be fearful but what's that mm. acronym for fear is it false evidence appearing real and yeah. it is it's made up in the mind and mm. it's linked to to stress i think because that's if we come into the traditional chinese medicine model of the uh, the water element the kidneys that that hold your fundamental energy your 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 jing essence and mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. this can be chipped away at if you are over adrenalized with the cortisol running around and all that and so mm -hmm. on the on the one hand you've got this fundamental resource your natural chi your jing essence and on the other hand you've got the adrenalized fight or flight got to go for it and and most of 21st century living tends to run on this and mm -hmm. and, it, and it's a it seems like it's normal if you're not stressed out and got a million things to do and terribly busy all the time then you're not worthy somehow yeah yeah and yeah. yet that actually kind of spins back down into your fear of what would happen if you were still if you did come into your meditation place or you did decide that to-do list i'm just gonna have to let it go for a little bit because i can mm -hmm. feel my system going out yeah. of control again you know so mm. on honoring the self isn't it it's, it's honoring ourselves and yeah i mean i'm very aware that if, for a while now Well, uh, yeah, having said that, I'm not, I'm not aware of it anymore, but for a long time, there was a lot of movement in my kidneys. You know, there was a lot of clearing out, you know, through that twin flame relationship, you know, that the book was about. There was an awful lot of, uh, yeah, you know, transforming, processing fear. Uh, so, yeah, I've been giving my kidneys, uh, you know, lots of love, certainly for the last couple of years, because I've been able to feel them. And, and I'm very aware of, you know, how my body corresponds to different, emotions and different stuff that's going on so there's always something interesting happening in my body and uh, you know it kind of messages information from the body of what's what's actually happening such wisdom our our bodies they they want to have a discourse with us that we're we're a, a whole unit aren't we our mind our body our spirit we're mm -hmm. trying to work in harmony and that's what our default is the harmony is there at our center it is there mm -hmm. for us to connect in with and to, and to be with, you know, and have these sort of moments of balance and stillness. And then because of the world, of the 10,000 things, we get pulled off into dramas or into um, have to's or e mm -hmm. expectations or lowest common denominator conversations. And just think, oh, am I and if you come back to self, the self remains true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's really true what, what you said. I think so often the the busyness is um, it has its root in fear, and you know. And the truth is that I am enough. It just kind of just that really sort of full stop. I, I am enough. I am enough just as I am. I don't have to prove anything. But you know, there's such a deep program, you know, from so young that, that you know that was installed and that was re repeated over and over unless you do this you know unless you achieve this unless you earn so much unless you look this unless you uh you know uh, have this prove this then it, yeah the, and it's not to say that we're to sit on our backsides and do nothing but there's a very there is a difference of the doing that's arising from being 
that it's just in a natural expression of who you are and what you're born what your gift is, what your unique expression is to contribute to the collective on this earth plane. And just the kind of, yeah, mechanical programmed do, 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 uh, you know, yeah, burnout, you know, adrenaline, fight and flight, which so many, you know, so much of our lives has been, certainly of my life, there was a lot of that going on, you know. Mm, absolutely i i like that sort of the dance from the do be do be do be do be yeah 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 <laughs> yeah absolutely it is it's a, it's a dance and it is our society just worships at the altar of busyness you know <laughs> and it's like you know no i'm not doing that anymore i'm not doing that anymore maybe the true wealth now is to say i have space and time to be Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and, I, and yeah. I love I love what you said also that um what is it that it's allowing the doing to arise from the being so mm -hmm. there always will be action that is inspired from the being mm -hmm. and and that's the that's the yin yang dance at its best isn't it when it's being in, inspired by your truth and your um um your creativity is just wanting to birth through you so the action will occur as an expression yeah. of your inner inner being mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, like that. It's, 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 it's just energy moving through us, isn't it? When energy is moving through us and it's in alignment with the, with our truth, then it manifests like a flower opening. It just it just blossoms into something, whether it's a book, or a poem, or a dance, or a piece of art, or a you know a business, or you know, whatever it is, anything that, that is created, and that. Again, the creation. Creation is the expression of the of, of, of the feminine. It arises from the masculine kind of thing. Or it, the, the, the two are inextricably entwined. They're both essential. Yes. But, but yeah, you know, creativity is life itself. You know, it's kind of and creativity and sexuality and all that stuff. And, and it all comes... Yeah, I mean, I'm just, yeah, it, it seems to me that it, that it comes through the body, not through the head. Yeah. yeah. And you know, the mind. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the mind is a wonderful tool, but best yeah. in service of the heart. And yeah. with the energy can get, you know, a lot of people have headaches, and neck tension, because we're so engorged up here. And yet, mm -hmm. you know, that the, um, the small heavenly circulation, the microcosmic orbit that channels the energy down the front of you and then up the back mm. enables that um, connection from the head down all the way through the dantians or chakras and all the way back up again so you can have this continual circuitry rather than just in an engorged area but i'm get i'm going off on qigongness now and what i was wanting to just bring in was the reminder when you're in that creative liminal space there's room for synchronicities and coincidences to occur and mm -hmm. as a full circle let's come round to how you actually met your twin flame was a complete synchronistic experience from having yeah. as you said earlier met you met her briefly and then what happened um yeah i mean <laughs> the, the, i met her actually met her on a on a dating site which was it was really odd because I'd said to myself, you need some time, you know, with yourself, Miguel, you know, and, and I'd spent a little bit of time by myself. And then one day in this aloneness, because there was all this kind of resistance to being with myself and the fear and wanting to be made complete by another, I found myself on the, you know, on my laptop on, on, on a, on a dating site. And, you know, a lot of the time my mind's going, you're not supposed to be doing this. You're not supposed to be doing this. And something, and it was like, but but I was I, I was and, and and her photo popped up and there, uh, to begin with I didn't recognise her as the woman that I'd met nine months earlier but there was just something really alluring it was like oh my god you know there was this real attraction and um, yeah you know and I sent her a message and and she actually she responded and, and, and one of the other many interesting synchronicities that happened was that she said that was her last day on that dating site. Uh, you know, it, it, she, uh, you know, uh, money had expired, her time up had expired, and you know, and if I hadn't messaged on that day, so it's kind of like, you know, for me, that's like, that's why I got on the computer then. That's why 
even though there was a part of my mind going, you shouldn't be doing this. You're not, you know, you're supposed to be single. You're not supposed to be distracting yourself. There was another part that pulled me and was like, oh my God, I've just signed up to a dating site. How did that happen? Like, you know? <laughs> this is a brilliant illustration of where the mind thinks it knows what's best for you, but your inner wisdom knows mm. that it knows what's best. So you, you, were, mm. you were strengthening your inner wisdom there just doing it anyway because that's what your whole system was feeling and the mind was not with all its logic yeah, wasn't able yeah. to get a a, a word in yeah. that wasn't what, what, what was the chances you know of me arriving at that website on that day like you know uh, i mean that it's just like you know millions and millions and millions to one so um fantastic yeah it, it was it was yeah the beginning of quite a journey, yeah. Quite a journey of the book. Give us another flash, yeah. Bring him home, a twin all, flame love story. All in there, yeah. All in yeah, there. and you can find out more on MiguelDean.net and your Facebook page and what other social media handles have you got going on? Yeah, my, my, my Facebook page is uh, Miguel Dean Sacred Masculine because uh, yeah, the, I, I've got reached my five thousand friends limit and. and, and and I've had to move, uh, you know, migrate across to a sort of public profile, uh, uh, Miguel Dean, Sacred Masculine. So, um, yeah, so, so uh, please, please uh, connect there. And yeah, my website, MiguelDean.net, where there's a little shop and you can, you can buy, the, buy the book there. And the book is now available to pre-order on Amazon. Um, When's it yeah. out then? When's it actually released? It, well, you know, the, all the dates of the, the signing of the publishing contracts of so many things. I mean, we, we actually met my twin flame. We actually ended up meeting on Valentine's Day. It wasn't planned or anything. That's another you know, I, start, I started writing the book on the winter solstice and uh, a couple of years ago. And, and so the, the, the publishing contract was signed on Valentine's Day. The, the first, uh, it was sent to print. Uh, it was all re ready to go to print on Beltane. And so the launch date is the summer solstice. Of course it is. Brilliant. And um, we will get this, um, this tea time out for you to nicely coincide with all of that. So, awesome. wow. Thank you so much, Miguel, for being part of tea time. No, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're really welcome. This book is highly recommended. I can't wait to read, read the rest of it. Um, mm. But I know you've, you've also got an, another track that is a particular favourite that you'd like to share with listeners to finish yeah. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess this has very much got an earth nature theme and feel to it as well. And it also speaks to, speaks to the, um, my Spanish blood. Uh, my mother was Spanish. And uh, this is uh, by Danit, uh, and it's called Cuatro Vientos, uh, which essentially is the four winds. Uh, and you don't need to understand Spanish to just get a feel of the, the beauty and the richness and the kind of reverence for, for, for Mother Earth and the Divine Feminine. Absolutely. Thank you once again, Miguel. Let's listen to this beauty.